But uh, so I mean, it's interesting to me because I'm reading Tumbleweeds right now. Uh -huh. I'm on page 56, and uh -huh. we switch perspectives in that book. And you go from Manny. Is, you, is that based on you at all? Well, yeah, yeah. I, Manny Cole is my alter ego throughout the whole four book New York Quartet. Which is not Danny uh, Wagner. That's your other alter ego. Wagner, Wagner. He's American. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but but so, they're 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 two the Manny Cole is sort of the I mean let me let me just say I have several uh, alter egos in my poems I have a three three poems that are called the Kevin poems and it's about a black kid in the nineteen sixties so Kevin was my first poetic alter ego then I have uh, Manny Cole who's in the New York Quartet I have Henry Matsumi a Japanese American boy who appears in a number of my short stories and in my book The Scorpion Swam. Uh, uh, he's also one of my alter egos. Then there's Dan Schneider himself, uh, who's uh, in True Life, my True Life memoirs, who's Dan Schneider, but he's the, again, it's a memoir, so it's not totally 100% me. Then there's Danny Wagner, who's in uh, these plays, so. Well, I was going to say, it's interesting because your characters seem to make observations about stuff. Like, I'm, I'm on right now the Fire Ants mm. uh, page yeah. i think it's from the black kids perspective yeah. and you're like with ants um and um it's interesting because i don't i don't want to say if that's like memoir like i don't know if that's like a right word to describe it but it seems to me that your characters like to observe very specific things and then like that's what says a lot about society am i right or wrong i don't know how i can articulate that there are there are there are different characters that have different ways of being i mean my characters generally are going to be more more uh, in touch with things than than your average person, but you know that's because your average person is a fucking sheeple. You know, you, I mean, I, not that's not to say that you couldn't write. I mean, I've got some pretty clueless characters. Um, it, it, if you get around to uh, Vincetti Brothers and then a Norwegian the family, I have this guy Tony Luft who's a killer, and Tony Luft is a pretty clueless fuck, but he's funny. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, it, it's it's pretty dull to, you know, why would you want to write about characters that are, are clueless unless you're going to use that in some larger scheme to, to bring something out? Well, yeah, well, okay. So, like, I'll put you this way. Like, you have Wub, Chubby William, correct? Yeah. So, like, could you imagine, and obviously he's supposed to be the dumb one, but I'm saying, like, He's not like, okay, could you imagine doing an entire book based off of Wub's mindset, or would you not do that? Because it seems to me so far, he seems to have a function in the greater story, but could you ever do like a story just about somebody who's an idiot like that? Like uh, I, I have I have uh, stories about people who are, uh, are fairly idiot. I have one of my early novels uh, was about a guy who's a pedophile who's reading a science fiction book and trying trying to equate his uh, uh, pedophilia with some kind of sexual uh, freedom that he's, he's uh, uh, you know, do it. I have a book with, uh, based upon a couple of years where I worked as a janitor, and the, the characters are all pretty fucking stupid, uh, other than the janitor. Um, uh, again, it's how you frame things. Uh, it's, you know, you can have, you can have clueless characters. Uh, uh, the, the last novel I wrote... Uh, uh, in the last three years, I've written 64 plays and two novels. Uh, and so uh, the last book that I did was about this girl uh, who was the main character uh, who was married to a, a real professional wrestler called Gorgeous George. And she alternates between being utterly fucking clueless and having these sort of accidental moments of insight. And uh, that's, that's what often happens is... You know, you can find, you have, in in my book, uh, I, I, I use a, a term about um, uh, writing, uh, oh, total immersion. Uh, and I came upon this while writing my second book, Vincetti Brothers. To a certain degree, it's in, it's in uh, Tumbleweeds, but the second book of the quartet, which was written six years later, Tumbleweeds, is where I really get into this total immersion. And in total immersion, you can have two characters talking for 10 pages about something that's probably not that deep. But the point of it is not the subject that they're talking about, but how they're talking about it. And I, I use this example. Next time after this COVID stuff is gone and people don't have to social distance, 
The next time you're at a bar or you're at a ball game and you're watching a game, take a look at how the sexes interact with each other uh, the, with, within in sex. When women are talking, you will see the, the, the women will look at each other eye to eye and, and, and they'll be engaged and they'll be like, girl, you know, I just want to tell you that Jonathan, he was a real son of a bitch. He, he did this to me. He did that. To me. Oh, girl, I get you. I get you, girl. Oh, I, I know. I, I, you know, Bobby, he was even worse to me. And they will connect eye to eye. Now, take a look at, at when men talk. Men, you've heard the term man spreading. Yeah, where they, yeah, yeah, the balls yeah. out. So, so men, when they want to talk deep to each other, they don't look eye to eye because there's the testosterone thing. There's the thing, who's going to flinch first? Men will sit side by side like they're in the bleachers watching a, a baseball game. And they'll, they'll, they'll be looking out into the ether because women are about tactile. They're about the reality of the moment. Men are much more abstract. Uh, and so men will be, uh, they'll, a man will be talking about, you know, instead of the women are talking about men, men will they talk about women. They'll be looking out the car and they'll say, man, Rita, she had the fucking best tits I ever sucked on. Yeah, man, the Rita, she was hot, man. I'd fuck her if she wasn't with you. That's the way men talk and relate. And it gets the total immersion because, because when you want to explore a character, you don't necessarily want to know what they're talking about or what's on their mind, but also how it's on their mind. Because again, it's not just about the color of the eye, but what's behind the eye. And it's not just about what a person is thinking, but why they're thinking, how they're thinking, how they are conversing, how they are communicating.